Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So last week I talked about this wonderful book and some of my favorite parts, but I thought I had to do a part two because there's something that's so useful in this book that I want to share with you. So if you're interested in finding out what that is, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I couldn't just make one video on this book because there are so many good ideas. But if you have this book or if you don't, I highly recommend you buy it. I suggest that you look on page 19 and page 19 uh, is about the context for and approaches to inquiry learning and really unpacks so many of the different approaches and the different names that all incorporate inquiry learning, those exploratory approaches. So I love how Kath has summarized all the different terms. So she says there are numerous contexts and approaches that lend themselves to learning through inquiry. While these may differ in emphasis, they all position learning as an act of exploration and in construction by the learner, then a process of transmission to the learner. And she's got this lovely table, and these are all the different contexts for and approaches to learning inquiry. So that includes, of course, play-based learning, which is normally adopted in early years, and I think that it should be adopted actually in secondary school. Uh, she talks about problem-based learning and looking at particular contexts of a problem and then trying to explore uh, that problem. She talks about project-based learning, which is another context where students are inquiring into a particular scenario. And she gives an example here of how students may inquire into how to design and run a sports carnival for school or how to set up a pop-up history museum for the local community. She talks about design thinking, one of my passions, and design thinking is a beautifully inquiry-based learning process, which is iterative and which can really help students to build creative confidence and, and get used to navigating ambiguity. Service learning um, is another example of inquiry. Philosophy for children, the three-act math lessons, Place-based learning, which is an approach in which the local, natural and built environments are used as the context for investigation. She talks about phenomenon-based learning, which is from Finland, and that's an approach that emphasizes the role of the current real-world events, local and global, as the starting point for the unit of inquiry. She then talks about units of inquiry and how these are organized under an essential question and enduring conceptual understandings. And she talks about the units of inquiry, which are organized under essential questions or enduring conceptual understandings. And units of inquiry often bring together several disciplines as students work through a cycle of inquiry over time. So it's either transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary. She talks about mantle of the expert, which was developed by Dorothy Heathcote, a drama-based approach in which teachers design fictional contexts that position learners as experts in particular fields, working in teams on a commission. She talks about challenge-based learning, and this is similar to project or problem-based learning developed by Apple, with an emphasis on using technologies to investigate and share learning. And she includes STEAM or STEM projects, and these are challenges designed to have learners solve problems and design solutions that integrate science, technology, arts, engineering, and maths. Very important that it's STEAM and we include the arts. Uh, she talks about the structured word inquiry developed by Peter Bowles, an approach to spelling in English that emphasizes investigation into the structure and origin of words. And this long list also includes tinkering and maker spaces. So this has an emphasis on working with materials, objects, and opportunities to tinker. Learners inquire through the use of materials within a space that supports creativity, designing, and making. Now, I know in my own workshop, so many teachers actually ask me, what's the difference between problem-based learning, project-based learning? When do we use design thinking? And I think Kath has really laid out a beautiful visual diagram here of the context for and approaches to inquiry learning. So thank you again, Kath.
I highly recommend this book once again. Thank you so much for joining me again this week and I hope to see you next time. Bye.